There was a time before Social Security and 401ks that, when someone reached a certain age where they could no longer work, their only option was the poorhouse. Now I'm talking about the early days of the 20th century. For those who couldn't afford retirement and had no family to help, they were shoved into these horrible, depressing buildings, usually cold with minimal care and limited and bad food. Human beings of an advanced age spent out their last days in a sad, depressed state. The idea of the poorhouse struck fear into many. One such person was Annie Edison Taylor, a widow and ex-school teacher. To avoid this fate, she did something crazy and dangerous, and this is her story. Well, hello there, Old Man Kelly here, Jeff to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. So going over Niagara Falls in a barrel, what a strange, weird concept, huh? And when you think about, about it, you probably think of a strapping young hero proving his bravery, young ladies and reporters everywhere, like Evil Knievel jumping over the fountains at Caesar's palace. But the first person to do the barrel tumble wasn't a man. It was a 63-year-old retired school teacher named Annie Edison Taylor. Annie Edison was born on October 24, 1838 in Auburn, New York. She was a school teacher until she married David Taylor at the age of 17. The two had one child who died right after birth, and then David went off to fight in the Civil War where he was killed, leaving Annie all by herself. The widow Annie did her best to survive, but by the time she entered her 60s, she began to worry about her future. What would become of her, she wondered. In an effort to secure her future, she came up with an outrageous idea to go over Niagara Falls in a barrel. She would later tell a reporter, I lost $8,000 some years ago in Chattanooga, and my classes in dancing and physical culture did not bring the money in fast enough to suit me, so I looked around for something that no one had ever done before as a means to make some money. The idea of going over Niagara Falls came to me in an instant, and I studied the conditions fully before I embarked on this trip, making the venture with every confidence that I would come out unharmed. Annie figured that if she survived the stunt, she could make a nice living going on a lecture tour. My thought was, if I could do something no one else in the world had done before, I could make some money honestly and quickly, she wrote in her autobiography. It would be fame and fortune or certain death. Now when Annie talked to reporters, she would lie and say she was in her 40s, but she was actually about 62. Annie spent a long time constructing her perfect barrel, going from drawings to mock-ups to this final strange-looking barrel. It is said that she handpicked each piece of wood. It was solid and watertight, constructed of oak and iron and padded with a mattress. It measured about five feet high and three feet wide at its diameter. She had problems getting started because many people didn't want to be involved with what they thought was a potential suicide. So a couple days before her attempt, she sent a cat over the falls. It was her own cat. When it was found, it was bleeding a little from the head, but otherwise it was fine. Annie was photographed with her pet. The date was October 24th, 1901. It was Annie's 63rd birthday. A rowboat took Annie and her barrel out into the river near the American shore, south of Goat Island. With the help of two assistants, the barrel was lowered over the side and Annie climbed on in. She took her lucky heart-shaped pillow with her. A leather harness was used to strap her inside. After the lid was screwed on, a bicycle pump was used to fill the barrel with compressed air. Once that was done and the hole was plugged, Annie was set adrift with a few thousand onlookers watching. The Niagara carried the barrel down towards the Canadian Horseshoe Falls and eventually, as the crowd watched, the barrel tumbled over the side. Less than 20 minutes after being set adrift, Rescuers reached the barrel and found Annie alive and relatively uninjured, except for a small gash on her head. It is said that her first words were, I prayed every second I was in the barrel, except for the few seconds after the fall when I was unconscious. And she said afterwards, If it were my dying breath, I would caution anyone against attempting such a feat. I would sooner walk up to the mouth of a cannon, knowing it was going to blow me to pieces, than make another trip over the falls. She called herself the Queen of the Mist and was ready for the fame and fortune she knew was coming her way, but it never did. There was a little fame, but it seemed that 
People didn't want to see a 63-year-old woman who apparently had little charisma or personality talk about her adventure. In fact, her manager stole the barrel and hired a more attractive woman to pose as Annie. The little money she did make was to hire a private detective to try to get her barrel back, but she never saw it again. Her worst fears were realized. She spent her last years of her life very poor. She did earn small amounts of money talking about her experiences, but was never able to build anything substantial. She attempted to sell her memoirs at Niagara Falls, but again, it never amounted to much. Setting up a souvenir stand, she would spend her final years posing for photographs with tourists. She talked about maybe doing a second attempt, but that never happened, and I guess for a while she worked as a clairvoyant. Annie Taylor died on April 29, 1921 at the Niagara County Infirmary in Lockport, New York. She was 82 years old. She is buried in Stunters Row, a section reserved at the Oakwood Cemetery in Niagara Falls for fellow stunters. This has been Old Man Kelly. I hope you enjoyed the history lesson. I'll be back soon with something else. Bye.